Good morning, still. It's wonderful to be with you, and um, my time is running out very quickly, so I want to jump into a little bit more worship at the end. So share briefly from my heart, and um, so what Andrew and Mike and some of the guys are trying to do, they get me to become a better teacher. So I actually had prepared something, but I'm not going to go that way at all. So I feel, I feel this session has to be a heart session. It has to be a heart session. It's as if our Father wants to connect us to His love. To His love. A couple of weeks ago, I was ministering at a, did a Father's Heart Week, at one of the more, more prominent schools in South Africa. And um, one particular evening, I just, I just spoke on the Father's heart and the Father's love. And at the end, we made it open for anyone who needed prayer to just to come in the context of the love of God and the Father and those who, who've never felt it nor experienced it, but really want to, to connect to it. And there was this year, this particular year, there was this one little girl that came, she stood in the row crying all the way. It was this queue of, of, of teens. She stood almost at the back, but as I started praying for the first one, I just... It's almost like, like I, I was waiting for her to come to, to, the, to the end of the line where I could pray for her, and she stood next to me, oh, she stood before me, and she started weeping. And she said, I, I, I lost my father about four months ago. And through the tears, she said, I had the best dad. He was a cuddler and a kisser. And... Uh, since, since I can remember, he, he would take me to bed, put me in bed, and just sit with me, hug me, kiss me. Every morning early, the first thing my eyes would see is my dad in the room made me coffee, and he would sit with me and just sort of wake up with me. That, that's been my life. I had such a good father. And she said, it's been four months since his death. It's been so hard. I miss the embrace, I miss the kisses, I miss his voice so deeply. And then she said, but tonight, I experienced what I've never experienced in my life before. I experienced another father's embrace. I felt him, she said, wrapping his arms around me. I felt him coming near. I could feel him breathe upon me. I just melted. And she said to me through the tears, it's, it's as if tonight I came home. You see, beloved, when we speak of the spirit of adoption, it's really simply just this, that you and I was deserving of death by the blood of Christ through faith that we are placed in the presence of Him. We are simply being brought into the affection of a lovesick God. And I almost wanted to speak this. I was thinking of it because Andrew was, has been sharing on what's, what you just heard now for the last two months, spoken that into our hearts. And the more I hear Andrew teaching on this thing, it's like the sonship thing has become like the grace thing. It's become what it's by nature never was. And I almost wanted to do a thing on recovering sonship. Because when I look at Christ, I see a very different kind of son. I think it's in the book of Philippians. I didn't have a chance to look at my notes, so forgive me. I'm just jumping. We teach a worship school back home, and our worship verse for, in the context of how we want to build into the heart of just Jen 
I think it's in Philippians 2. The greatest verse of worship in the Bible. That he humbled himself in obedience. Even unto the point of death. Beloved, but here's what I want to point towards. It's a work of love. If you and I are called into the slavery thing to Christ, what you and I desperately need is a revelation of love. It's a revelation of love. And I, I heard one guy taught at a stage and he said, Jesus on the cross, it's not him telling the world, this is how much I love you. Jesus on the cross is saying to his Abba, this is how much I love you. Jesus on the cross is Abba saying to us, this is how much I love you. If you want to have a clear picture of what worship should be in our context, it's arms wide open. You see, the second Adam did what the first Adam could not do in a garden. The first Adam could not bow its knee and say, not my will but yours. The second Adam, the son had to come. And in a garden, his knees fell to the ground. Not my will but yours, Abba. I look at that picture, all I see is love. In the very heart of surrender, beloved, it's love. Because even though we are called to be slaves of Christ, it's a spirit of sonship within that. It's not a spirit of slavery that leads to death. It's life. How much the Father loves. 1 John, behold what manner of love. Wasn't it Paul that said, we are compelled. I think that word is controlled by love. Oh, beloved, if you and I are to set our hearts on this pilgrimage to become a remnant that will finish this race, we need to connect our hearts to love. To love. To love. I do really believe, you know, that there's, five, there's five words in the New Testament for sonship. The first one is nepios, where you get the nepi from. It's, they've, been, they've come into the house, but they, you don't give them the car keys. Because they can't drive. The last word of the five is the word hikios, which means a full and exact representation of the nature and the character of your father. And Jesus accurately brings into the earth the nature, imitates mature sonship in what way? I humbled myself even unto death in obedience to my Father. So I'm jumping, but I'm going to keep on jumping for at least five minutes and then I'll start ministering prophetically. I, 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 this year, the Lord has been stirring my heart. What we're trying to do is we need, we're trying to divorce a mindset that worship is singing. And I, and I want to take you to Abraham's story. The first time worship is mentioned in the Bible, it's where Abraham is asked by, by God to go sacrifice your son. Right? And so Abraham did this. He just The next morning, God up, took his son. And as they approached Moriah, he said to his servants, you stay down at the foot of the mountain, for my son and I are going to worship. Now, I... Trust me, Abraham was not saying, we're going on top of this mountain, we're going to sing some songs unto the Lord. No, he was speaking in the context of worship, beloved, faith demonstrated in obedience. That, beloved, is in the heart of a son. 
the very first time worship is mentioned in the Bible, it's spoken in the context of surrender. Sacrifice. Offering. It's the first time the word love is used in the Bible as well. First time worship is mentioned, it's this, it's this act of a man called the friend of God that withheld nothing from his God. Nothing. He humbled himself in obedience. May that, may that, I pray that that would resonate in your spirit. What fuels this lifestyle is a heart connected to love. A heart connected to love. Most of you and many of you are leaders. I'm still an infant to some of the gentlemen that's ministering here in the context of years serving and loving Jesus. But I can tell you one thing of the years that I've been ministering unto the Lord, that I've found myself many a times on this stage saying the right things, leaning on the gift, but having a heart disconnected from Him. So, so what if you, your church is growing the fastest and you have the greatest revelation? So what if you have a heart that's disconnected from love? You see, that's the spirit of adoption. It's, it's not about how much I can get. Beloved, the heart of it is, is that you who once were far away, you have been brought face to face. You know what we say to the guys back home over and over and over and over? Worship was never man's idea. It originated in the heart of God. He's the very architect of intimacy and worship. It is simply echoed in us. Why is that important to know? Every moment given to love Him should not be wasted because it's a gift. Having moments of kneeling and singing and obedience, it's a treasure, it's a gift given by grace, sustained by mercy, beloved. May you carry every moment with weight and honor withholding nothing from him who is worthy of it all. Worthy of it all. So this is simple, simple heart thing in this session. My prayer is that you would be attached, connected, Fold, restored into love. Into love. That you would once again find yourself at that place. I woke up one morning and I cannot teach this. I'm just going to say this because if I teach it, I'll get... I woke up one morning and the Lord spoke into my heart and He said, If Ephesus, if you are not careful, you will become Sardis. I didn't know what the Lord was saying to me, so I went to only two places I know the word is mentioned. It's the seven letters to the book of Revelation, Ephesus. Well done, Ephesus. But I have one thing against you. You're forsaken. Your first love. You do not love as you did in the beginning. Sardis is that church <laughs> Jesus writes to her and he says, you have a reputation amongst the brethren that you are alive, but I say to you, on the inside you're dead. Beloved, if we get disconnected from love, if we get disconnected from first love, we become that. We have life on the outside, but we're dead on the inside because being connected to love is what makes us wasn't it Christ that says, it's by this that they will know. 
But here's the thing, you and I, we don't have that little engine inside that produces love. It's a work of grace by the Spirit of God in us. And without love, we're hopeless. Without love, we are religious. Without love, we have nothing. So my prayer, and I want to minister to one or two. I actually made notes about whom I want to minister to. And I want to minister to, to one or two or three maybe, and then just go into some time of worship. This is me. So I, I have to say, I, I, was, I was in my heart, I was thinking, you know, I had some af the afternoon to, to plan a bit. <laughs> so I'm just speaking out of my heart to you. If you want anything built into your life, here's the thing. You'll hear many great teachings this week. You'll hear many great teachings in your life. A teaching, no matter how great or how anointed, beloved, will change your life. It will impact you. It will not change you. You are changed at your Father and your King's feet every single day, connected to His heart, poured out in love. That's where we are changed into the very image of Him. A heart connected. It's almost, I almost want to say to you today, it's what He wanted from the beginning. A heart connected. A heart connected. Because for 10 years I was itinerant, whatever that means. But I was the sonship guy that just taught sonship in the context of inheritance, authority, etc. And so coming into the 412, into just gen context this year, the Lord said to me, I want you to divorce everything you've, you think you know, and I want to tutor you, I want to teach you from a whole new perspective and context and lens. So the first time Andrew spoke on slave, oh, beloved. I was dead quiet. I didn't say a word to no one. What do you think of the message? I'm going for, you know. But not, not to, just allowing it, just, I don't even know where you're going with this God. Oh, but I've come home into that. Why? Because as I ran into scriptures, I found myself running into Jesus. And I saw the Son of Love humbling himself in obedience because of love. May that be your testimony this week. May that be your testimony this week. Come home into love, heart connected to Him. You know, so easily as leaders, we're so busy with church. I remember, I'm really, really ending with this. I'm, re I'm remembering about two years ago, I, sa I ministered at a conference with a couple of church leaders, and I just did the worship there. So we had lunch, and we had an opportunity to, to chat. So I looked across the table. All of them were sitting there. And so I just thought, let me ask a bold question, and because we're talking deep things, and I said to them, so when last of one of you just, you, you went into the secret place, not to find a message, but to find his heart? When last did one of you run into the secret place, not to get something, but to give something? Because of love. The only reply I got from one of them was years ago. With the spirit of adoption, you've been brought into and placed in the presence of Him. It's wonderful. I feel so tempted to teach. But it's because of the, uh, the you know, if you hear Andrew and you hear Will, and I know Mike's coming, you're just like a young rookie you want to teach as well. You know what's wonderful about a guy like 
Like, well, yesterday evening you heard him teach. You could feel the anointing of a teacher coming. You're right. Just as he opened his mouth, your heart's open and melted. Do you know what's the most beautiful testimony of him? And I don't know him that well. The most beautiful testimony of him is not how he can teach and the revelation he carries in his heart, but the fact that over and over and over and over and over and over again, he would bow his knee and surrender. That's maturity. That's sonship. That's love. Amen. I, I felt to minister some words. Is that okay? Can I do that, Andrew? Tommy from Firebrand. Is it the right name for the church? Where is he? Is he somewhere? Oh, there. You can sit. You can just sit. Just allow the gentlemen around you to put their arms on your shoulders. Will you please hug him? <laughs> yes. So I felt, I actually didn't feel to speak it. I'm going to sing it. What I feel the Lord is saying to me. Can you maybe get the piano louder in the, in the house, please? Will you just pray with me as the Lord ministers to him? I just want to minister to three and then I'm going to close. <laughs> You are my son, the beautiful one, the delight of my heart you are. And for a season I held you in, for a season I held you close. But the days are turning and I'm going to send you into the nations. Son, you're approaching that hour. For my people, I, they have many teachers, but so few fathers. And I will raise you up as a father into the nations. In this hour, says the Lord. For I have done a mighty work in your heart over the years, throughout all the seasons, says the Lord, says the Lord. The Lord says, I will raise you up to become a protector, an administrator of the heart of God, and your voice would be connected unto the deepest parts of my heart. And when you speak, they will hear Father's heart, and they will draw near into my presence. And then the Lord said, I see in your life four or five more church plants to come. And the Lord says, dream, 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 bigger dreams. Dream, 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 bigger dreams. And the Lord says, I'm going to open doors into the nation of France for you. And you'll be sent forth as an apostolic voice into her heart. Like a skillful surgeon, says the Lord. Oh, open heart surgery is waiting for France. Behold, son, this is the day that I would open doors into the very heart of her that has not wanted me, but she will desire. She will desire. The Lord says, in this day, you would, you would minister under an anointing that would break open the Holy Spirit. 
You will teach on the Holy Spirit. You will move in the power of Holy Spirit. There will be signs and wonders flowing. You've been praying for this here and here and day and night. And the Lord says that you're about to step into it. And this will break open into the nations. The Lord says your womb is pregnant with a ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will not be invited because of your knowledge, your great teaching ability. The Lord says, oh no, you will be invited because of what you carry, the fire. And then I, I heard the Lord says, it's time for you to write, 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 write. Lord says, there's grace in the season upon your hands to write, write. One book after the other, says the Lord. Set your faith as Andrew would say, be faithful for writing. Father, I want to bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. This word, will, the seed of this word will fall into his spirit. Amen. Steve Fishbull, I felt some words for you. Just put your hands on his heart wherever he is. What's my time? Hey. I feel um, wherever you are, Steve, you, you and your wife, it's for both of you, actually. Put your hands on, on them, please. Just put your hands on their shoulders. We're family. Thank you. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to break into your church with love. There's a supernatural ministry and flow of love and the heart of God. It's going to break open. The Lord says, I am calling you to the table of communion. I'm going to break bread. I'm going to serve wine. Oh, the Lord says, I am interrupting your schedule with intimacy. It will be like a whirlwind. And it will at first what looks like it causing chaos. The Lord says, no, I'm actually not bringing chaos. I'm bringing order. The Lord says, and upon you as a family, I have, I'm actually putting on a mantle that will give you favor into the nations. The Lord says, and it's in this season that both of you, you will be impregnated with a word of love. And the Lord says, as this word is impregnating your spirit, I am opening doors around you. You're not even seeing them now. But I'm raising up mighty financial support for what you are about to dream for in your spirit. And when, you f when faith has come and you step out onto the water, the Lord says, suddenly you will see, oh my word, we have resources available to do what is stirring in our spirit, the dream that the Lord awoken in our hearts. And the Lord says, you will actually come into the nation of Africa many a times. Many a times you'll be involved in her. You'll be involved in her heart. And this is what I hear the Lord saying. It's you will come in and you will actually clean her womb. The Lord says, for the womb of Africa has been infected she cannot fall pregnant. But you, I will raise up. You will come in. You will start cleaning out her womb. So that when my seed penetrates, she will bear. Your hands will get dirty. It's not your nature. The Lord says you will weep and weep and weep. And a weeping and anguish will come upon you and your wife. You will have pictures of orphans around the world. I see on your, on your fridge, on your walls, and you will walk and you will cry out and you will weep. For in this hour you will raise up the Father's house. You will love the unlovable. And the Lord says, in and through you, I will raise up a mighty youth movement. It will actually shake your nation. And it will not be a youth movement that's drawing the youth with lightning and smoke and sound and music. The Lord says, no, there will be weeping and worship and surrender because I'm doing a work of love. And the Lord says, an incorruptible seed is now maturing in the midst of you and it will bear fruit in the season to come. Father, I pray for that. Pray for that, Lord. Bless them with this word. Let it fall into their hearts. And then the last one, Gordon from Scotland. He corrected me this morning. Where are you? Put your hands on his shoulders for me, please. Lord says, I'm going to fast track you in this season. 
fast track you what would have taken others 10 years, you will climb that same mountain in two years. The Lord says, and I will raise you up as a leader that will have leaders, that lead leaders. I've set such a grace upon you, such a grace upon you. The Lord says, and you feel like a little kid in big man's shoes. The Lord says, son, your greatest responsibility is to change how you see yourself in the season. You're not, just hear the language, just know, hear what I'm saying. The, your biggest challenge in the months to come is that you would actually, by calling, you should stop seeing yourself as the son you should start seeing yourself as the father. You should stop seeing yourself as the guy serving the vision. You should start seeing yourself as the one through whom I want to bring the vision. I'm bringing you into something more, son, and you will grow into those shoes in a very short amount of time. I hear the Lord is saying, two years, two years, two years, two years, and I hear the Lord is saying for you, it's time for you to move. It's time for you to move. I know you're moving buildings, but it, it, that, that is almost like in the natural. It speaks of what the Lord wants you to do in the spiritual. I feel the Lord says you have to disconnect yourself from whatever you're connected to. And you have to move from there. And there's connecting your heart to something else. And the Lord is speaking to you already about that. But He will unveil that in your spirit as the, as the weeks and the months progress. But I hear the Lord is saying, moving, move out of. It's like the Lord is almost saying to you, and I know it's not really the thing, but... But it's like the Lord is bringing you out of Egypt. And He's bringing you into something more. And hear the Lord saying, Son, I just want to affirm leadership on your life. That I love you. That I love you, my son. You're very precious to me. Very beautiful to me. How I love you, my son. 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 How I love you. The Lord says this week, your heart will wake up. Your heart has been not sleeping, but, but she is not fully alive in the context of what she's been called to be. You're waking up this week. The Lord says, for the next, I see in the next couple of weeks, you will struggle to sleep. The Lord says, because you won't know what it feels like when your heart is alive. And I hear the Lord is saying, actually to you, and I'm cautious of saying this, but I almost feel like the Lord wants to say to you, you have come home. You have found your tribe. It's been in your heart all these years, but you're tasting her for the first time. I just want to bless you with that. Bless you with that word. And so just in me closing, I've got six minutes. I want to call you to the front. It's where you are for a moment. Will you just close your eyes? And all I want is a simple, just open your heart to the Father now. Just open your heart to Jesus. I feel the Lord just wants to minister His love. Just receive it. Just run. Run. Just run into His arms. Just get lost. Come. Get lost, beloved. Just run away from familiarity. There's something greater. There's something greater. Oh, yeah. Wrap me in your arms. I want to get lost in your love. I want to get lost in your love, Jesus. Wrap me in your arms. I want to get lost in your love. want to get lost in your love, 
Jesus, yeah, wrap me in your arms. I want to get lost in love. I want to get lost in your love. Jesus, yeah, wrap me in your arms. I want to get lost in your love. I want to get lost in your love. Will you stand with me and just lift your hands and sing with me this. As we close now, sing. Wrap me in your arms.